This time on Distant Chores, we're looking at how to do tidal calculations. I'm Paul Shard, and my wife Cheryl and I have been sailing and filming for 30 years now. We've been hearing from a lot of you that you'd like more information on passage planning and techniques. One of the cruising areas that we found most interesting was the south of England, which has tides up to 15 feet. In this video, we're going to show you how to calculate the height of the tide at different times, not just when it's high or low. Today, we're going to look at an example of using that tide to explore a shallow area, in this case, Chichester Harbour. I'm using footage we shot for season seven of the Distant Shores television show, when we use the tide to get to a pub and go ashore for dinner. But for today's demonstration, I'm using the tide data from today, July 4th, 2020. Happy July 4th, everybody. To start, we need the times of high and low water at our destination. Our plan is that we're gonna go up onto the beach at the high tide, then when the tide goes out, we can stay at that area on the beach, have dinner at the pub, then when the tide rises again, we can pull off. We've always used a paper version of Reed's Nautical Almanac for tides in Europe, but for this example, I've got the downloadable PDF from Reed's and printed off a couple of pages. It's pretty convenient. So here's July 4th. We have a high tide in the morning at 10.39, 4.6 meters. Then we have low at 15.56, and that's when we're planning on drying our boat out in front of the pub, and that'll be around dinner time. Now this is because our boat can lift the keel and dry out. I always note down the tide times whenever I'm planning a passage in a tidal area. In this case, we're going to be using the tides to explore very shallow areas, so it's even more important to know how the tide will affect us. Our plan involves using the high tide to get right up to the pub, then drying the boat out on the beach while we visit the pub, then float off at the next high tide, which is at 22.48. The other information in the almanac is a lot of information about the port itself and the different ports that use the main standard entry of Chichester Harbour uh, gives the area the very detailed tides for every day with their high and lows for that area for that main area, and then there's differences inside the harbour, say at Bosom or Itchener or Del Key. Looking at the Del Key entries, we see it's only 10 and 15 minutes later at high water, so we can basically uh, ignore those differences. It doesn't matter very much. Now what does matter is we're going to have to look at the, uh, the actual tidal curve. So what we have from the tide graph here is we're only given a high tide time and a low tide time. So what we need to do is to fill out this Chichester Harbour graph for the day we're talking about. So we're going to look here and we're going to say low water was at 1556. So I'm going to just fill that out here. And then every hour later we can write that in. So one hour after 1556 is 1656. And onwards we can fill out the rest of these entries for each hour after uh, the low tide as the tide is rising again and each hour before that so from 1556 back would be 1456 1356 1256 so what we're looking for is to see uh, each hour how high the tide is in this area not just the tide number that's high and low tide for the times of the day because you can see how different the curve is it's not a sinusoidal curve for the Chichester tide area now, what we're going to do is look at the chart, and we're going to come up with the amount of water that we need to get into this area. In the area where we're going, it's all green on the chart. Now, what that means is that it actually at low water, the area is entirely dry. So the only reason we can go in there at all is because high water brings enough extra water in over the green area to flood it, and that's what we're going to be floating in. So when you read normal depths on the chart, you see a depth would say 1.8 meters, that means it's 1.8 meters deep. If you see it says 1.9 meters with a little line underneath, that means you need 1.9 meters of water above the bottom to flood the area, and then any water above that will be water that you can float in. Looking at the tide for the Del Key area, we're seeing that it says 1.9 meters of water above low water is when there's actually water in that area. We need 1.9 meters then, plus another 1 meter to float the boat, so we're looking for 2.9 meters. To use this tide table, 
you have to enter the data off of this table to show that we have 1.1 meters at 1556. We enter today's high water height of 4.6 meters and low water 1.1 meters on the graph and connect them. Now this graph is customized to give us today's tide height at every hour like this. So at 1856, roughly 7 o'clock in the evening, we draw a line to intersect the curve and across to see that we have a tide height of 2.3 meters. In our case we need 2.9 meters tide height so we draw a line from 2.9 down to our tide line then across to the curve to see the tide drops below 2.9 at around 1340 and rises back above 2.9 at 20 hundred or 8 o'clock. So that means that basically we can show up we have got to get us ourselves into position before about 1330 and then we'll be floating off again around 2015 in the evening after dinner at the pub. This is the traditional method of doing tide calculations using the almanac. As you can see, this is something that you can calculate at home before you get onto the boat and head out for the day. Uh, I always note down the high and low times for tides and uh, then look at any of the areas that we have as a destination and make sure that we understand uh, this kind of curve that shows just what's going to happen in the tides in between the high and low because it makes quite a difference both for making shallow passages uh, as well as more complicated things like drying out. If you'd like to check your work, you can use an electronic method such as Navionics Boating app, which has also corrected for UK summertime and confirms our result of the tide rising back to 2.9 metres around 8 UTC, 9 o'clock summertime. But it is fun to do the traditional method using paper, so... If you don't have access to a source of tidal curves, you can do an approximation using the rule of twelfths. Most areas have two tides per day, and many tides around the world follow a roughly sinusoidal curve, with the water falling slowly at first, then more quickly, then slowly to low tide, speeding up again as it rises and crests slowly again. If you divide the times between high and low into six hourly intervals, this can be approximated by the rule of twelfths, which states the tide falls one twelfth in the first hour, then two twelfths the next hour, then three twelfths, three twelfths again, then two twelfths, and finally just one twelfth before hitting low tide. This simple rule will give you a pretty good approximation by dividing the tide difference from high to low into twelve increments. For example, if the tide table shows a range of twelve feet, then it would fall by one foot, then two feet, then three feet, then three feet again, then two feet, and finally one foot before hitting low. If you'd like more information on these, please subscribe to our channel. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, throw us a like if you enjoyed it, found it helpful, and a comment down below if there's anything else you'd like more information on for us to look in to future videos on the technical and passage planning. Thanks for watching everyone. Safe sailing. I think this is the best thing I've ever done in a big boat. This is an adventure with a big beautiful boat like this can take for a normal yacht of this size and calibre will not be able to do what we're doing now. So we are adventuring as though we're in a little dinghy having fun like swallows and Amazons and this is what it's all about and so we've got the right boat for the job. I reckon this is a big mistake. We've come <laughs> here, on, Paul, come we've on, come Paul. here. We don't have a dinghy, so we're right at the pub and we can't get there. I know, but it's What's your big, it's your big birthday and this is your big birthday Yes, but, 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 but there's the pub. <laughs> but there is a happy ending. The tide goes down as it does and we walk ashore for a drink and dinner. Any other sauces for you too? So here we are, real pub food, a wonderful atmosphere that we can sail to.